mind blowing things in your life? Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your love, for your faithfulness. Thank you because you are always amazing in our lives. Even when we don't recognize it, Lord, we know that you never cease from protecting us. You never stop keeping us. You never stop watching over us as a loving father. We give you all the glory. We are gathered today because of your love, because of your protection. Thank you for all you continue to do in our lives. And in this month of gratitude, Lord, may you open our eyes of understanding to see all the battles that you fight and win on our behalf in the name of Jesus. We have come today to hear from you, to learn from you. We ask, Lord, that you speak to us from above. And Lord, if anyone has come with any burden in their hearts, may those burdens be lifted in Jesus' name. Thank you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, choir. Thank you for that wonderful rendition. Um, our general overseer is ministering in a different church today. So I'm standing here on his behalf to take this message. And the message is titled, Benefits of Gratitude. Benefits of Gratitude. Like you know, September has been declared our month of gratitude. Our month of gratitude. And I want you to begin to reflect in your, you know, your own life. What are the things that you are grateful for this morning? What are you grateful for this morning? The text is First Thessalonians 5, not 6. What are you grateful for this morning? It's easy to point at the things that trouble us. It's easy to point at the things that we lack. It's very easy. The devil will flash it in your mind. Even as we talk about gratitude, for some people, the devil will be challenging you. What are you grateful for? You like this. See your life. And then he begins to tell you your life history. He will miss the good parts. He will even miss the part that you are alive. You even miss the part that you are alive. Which is a big deal, by the way. You are not alive because you are the best Christian in the world. God is not keeping you because you are the most faithful. There are people who are more faithful than you who are gone before you. He's not keeping you because you are the most educated. There are people who are more educated, richer. Probably better by the standards of the world in every way. But they are gone. There are some people that COVID swept away that till today have not been able to get over it. Because I knew them personally. I knew how full of life they were. One of them, a medical doctor who has a hospital. How can he die of COVID? They say he was treating a friend and he got infected from there and he died. We lost him. Great loss, big loss. If I call him his name, you will know, but there's no need. In fact, after he passed away, when I heard that he died, sometimes, because he's so jovial, sometimes I will go to his Facebook page and imagine that he will write and say, not be me die, because he's that, he was that playful. Say, hey, Jiro, not mind them, not be me die, you. I will just be imagining in my head. Praise the Lord. But COVID, COVID came, swept some fantastic people away and left us here. Is it because we are better? No. My sister who testified, she saw a fatal accident. The people that got caught in that accident, it's not like we are better than them. Even for you to have been born, you should be grateful to God. Many people were swept away as pregnancy. I don't know which man of God was saying that even for you to have been conceived and been born, that you're already a victor. 
because many sperm cells competed to fertilize your mom's egg and you won. If it was a different sperm cell, it would not be you. For your information, it would be somebody else. <laughs> it would be somebody else. I remember those days that they used to challenge me to say, Mommy, you people cheated though, that you married so so and so yeah. I'm supposed to be so so and so age. That is one year older than, <laughs> than he is. He said, he will come back and say, but anyway, if you had had a child at that time, it wouldn't have been me. I said, now you understand. <laughs> that child would not have been you. So you should be thankful to God. You woke up this morning, you were able to come out of bed. Go to the hospital and see how many people did not wake up this morning. Number one. Some woke up this morning, they can't come down from the bed. Some will come down from the bed, they can't walk freely on their own. There are people who are going through traumatic experiences as we speak. Even as we speak, some people are dying this moment. But you are here, healthy, hale and hearty. Even if you are not fully hale and hearty, there is a promise in the house that you will be healed. Yes, that's the word of God. I'm not the one promising. It's already in the word of God. If you can hook on to it. On Sunday, last Sunday, yeah, we were here to celebrate with our sister, Bilari. Is that not so? Aha. Uh -huh. Her situation even even confounded the doctors because I interviewed the doctors and they were like, her recovery was unbelievable. And I was asking one of the doctors, okay, when you took her to the theater, what were the chances? She's, one of them said it was 50-50. 50-50 means you can either wake up or die. But she's alive to testify. But she called me within the week, or was I the one that called her? I think I called her to share a testimony. Yeah, no, no, they called me to ask a question, then I used the opportunity to share a testimony. I wanted to share that testimony with Dr. Amina on Sunday, but the event was already starting, so I said, uh, let's just leave it. What was that testimony? Um, before the book launch, I had a strong body in my heart to pray for her, to say, Father, she will not be sick on the day of the book launch. She will not have crisis. They won't take her to hospital. Because it will be dramatic for us to gather here. And hear that the person launching book is not here. I was praying quite late. I, I shared with that day. I said, I have a strong urge to pray for Bilari. And I kept praying. Now, after service, we went home. And immediately I got home, I became feverish. I knew it was an attack. I became feverish. I told her, I said, you know how I'm feeling right now? I'm very sick. I'm feeling feverish. I said, but it's better me than Bilari. If I'm not there, it's better than for the owner of this book not to be there. So I slept. By the time I woke up, the fever was gone. And we came. So within the week, the husband called me to ask a question. And I said, let me share a testimony with Bilari. And as I was sharing, Bilari said she was on drip till that, that day of the book launch. That she was on drip. So something was actually happening. I didn't know, because I didn't talk to any of them. And then she was telling me that the night before the launch, that she woke up at midnight, woke her husband to say, let us pray for mommy. And she had an urge to pray for me. Are you seeing how, yes, that, that she had an, are you seeing how this Holy Spirit works? Are you seeing how the Holy Spirit works? For those of you who play with your Christianity, I beg. There is no need to play church. No need to. If you are out there and you are not born again, at least we know that you are not born again, we will be targeting you and praying for you. But don't be in the house. And people see you as born again and you have no relationship with the Holy Spirit. It makes no sense. Larry was telling me that their uncle, who is 90 years old, Baba Fulani, that called her to say, I've read the book, and the book has increased my faith at 90. At 90. <laughs> I don't know who you think you are in the house. Don't play with your salvation. Particularly in the age that we live in, none of us can lead ourselves. None of us can rule ourselves. We need the Holy Spirit to instruct us, to guide us, 
to place those kinds of burdens in our hearts over our loved ones. To pray concerning things that you know nothing about. It is called relationship. When you have a relationship with the Lord, He goes ahead of you. He teaches you all things. He even causes you to do things that you don't understand. I remember when Ricky was writing um, A-level exams and I was praying for her. I told her to send me her timetable. And every day I woke up in the timetable, the paper she has that day, I would pray oh, and pray. Uh -uh. One day, the Holy Spirit reminded me that, you know, Ruki will not fail an exam unless she does not write the exam. So I was now thinking, I said, why, why would she not write the exam? What kind of angle is that? I began to pray in that angle to say, Father, she will write the exam. Whatever it is that will stop her writing the exam. Ah, I demolish. I don't know whether she remembers, but one time when she came, I was asking about the exam. She was telling me that in one of the papers, I can't remember that she was very sick. She was coughing. Maybe she had a flu or something. At some point, she had to even leave the class and come back. So maybe that's what the devil was planning. So that she would be sick and not write the exam. Because she does not write the exam, then the two years in A-levels are wasted. You know? She can't get admission and... And I remember when she was going for A-levels, you know, one woman called me and said, ah, she has a school. She and her friend, I think they were going abroad or so. And uh, one called me and said, ah, she has a school, oh. uh, she, they do A-levels in Nigeria. And that many of our children that go abroad to do A-levels, they don't pass. They will finish the A-levels, they will come back, no admission, they will go and do jam again. I told her, I said, God forbid, not my child. I began to rebuke. Uh, uh, what kind of talk is that? What kind of talk? Me, I did not accept you. I said, no, not my child. She will pass. She go pass. Thank God both of them passed. <laughs> she and her friend. Praise the Lord. In fact, I think both of them even made first class. Have we? Um, your, what's her name? In the US. Is it Rita? Yes. Praise the Lord. You don't take things for granted, though. This, this Christianity we are talking about, it's not just name. Carry name up and down. Carry name up and down. Or carry Bible up and down. Without knowing the content of your Bible, without a relationship with the Holy Spirit, you are just playing. Just playing. Let us go beyond play. Let's make it a lifestyle. Let's make it a lifestyle. And God will continue to direct us in Jesus' name. In this month, we are talking about gratitude. And seriously speaking, gratitude is your ability to show thanks for who you are first and foremost. So you must know who you are in the Lord. Who are you? What is your place? We are heirs of the kingdom. The Bible says we are joint heirs with Jesus. Do you know what that means? Do you know what that means? That the same privileges that Jesus has, you have. To drive it home, you know he lives in you. Is that not so? Praise the Lord. So the same privileges that Jesus has, sitting at the right hand of God the Father and relating closely with him and saying, Father, this is what I think should happen. You also have that privilege, except you don't know who you are. And we are the way we are because truly we, we, we don't play our position. I'm not the one that said you are a joint hair. It's the Bible that says, said it. Is that not so? And you are a joint hair with Jesus. We are a co-hair with Jesus. So if Jesus can decree a thing, you can decree a thing. And it will be honored by the Father. The Bible says we should decree things. I don't know what your life is like right now. You know, full of regrets, full of lamentations, full of things to cry about and all of that. I am not downplaying your real life experience. I am not downplaying your real life. If, for those of you who were here on Sunday during the book launch, you heard Bilari say, even in the midst of those crises, she will put on music and she said she will be dancing like a mad woman. And the children will come and join her. That's a person, <laughs> do you know that that, that that positive spirit added to her recovery? Yes. Oh yes. Because when you are cranky and you are grumpy and you are grumbling and you are asking God too many questions and you are lamenting, it affects you not just spiritually, it affects you emotionally and it even affects you physically. That is it. 
Some of us, our situations, I'm not saying your situation is not bad by the standard of the world, it may be bad. But when you start lamenting about it, you are making it worse. You are making, those lamentations will not change it. No wonder the Bible teaches us in, in the passage that we read today, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses um, 16 to 18. Very interesting passage. It says, rejoice always. Rejoice always. And I was reading, I was asking God, I said, is that even possible? Rejoice always. Always. Which means there's no problem. Ne? And then he goes on to say in verse 17, he says, pray continually. The energy that you spend lamenting, spend it to pray. Spend it making declarations. When the devil and his demons come to preach to you, to say, you see your life, you've been born again. You deserve God. You not get money. This one, that one, can you turn that energy of lamentation and anxiety into prayers? And then in verse 18, it says, give thanks in all circumstances. And I was still asking God, I say, all circumstances. Some passages say in everything. Are there circumstances in your life in which you cannot give thanks? It's possible. Naturally speaking. But I've seen people who escaped disaster through a disappointment. Through a disappointment. By the way, many women and men escape disastrous marriages because of disappointment. I hope you know that. Somebody disappointed you into your rest. And some people will sit there oh, for years. They are lamenting over this person that disappointed them. Please wake up oh, if you are in the house. There is a way God does his thing. Yeah, you may be thinking this one. Without this one, I don't die and I lie. Now lie, nobody has your life in their hands. Nobody. It's only God that who gave us life that can take it. Nobody else. Don't, don't toy with your heart and let somebody hold your heart so much that, you know, uh, he, I don't die. No. Lies. That may be God rescuing you. So a certain woman missed her flight. And the plane crashed. Yeah, that was uh, which of those, those early flights that crashed. I don't remember the name. Not so soliso. Um, Bellevue. Bellevue. She was going to board the flight. It was, it was uh, already late. And uh, she called the husband to say, I'm on my way to the airport. Oh, if I don't go earlier, I'll miss the flight. The husband was like, it's already night. What, what is it? Tomorrow you come now. So she decided not to even go again. She turned back. That flight crashed. People died. People who we know. <laughs> Even people in her own office, that, because they went for a program. Some people in her own office that made that flight, they died. I understand that for a long time, the woman would just sit down and be looking like somebody who is dead, because she can't imagine that she's alive. There are some disappointments that turn out to be a blessing. And particularly if you are a person that walks in the Lord, this is where I emphasize the place of relationship. If you are a person who walks in the Lord, it means the Lord directs your steps. And if you miss an appointment, not because you were lazy or because you woke up late. Let me tell you a story of a friend, a very close friend who is a born-again Christian. Fantastic Christian. She used to work in this UN house. I worked there once upon a time too. And uh, one day she woke up in the morning. She was sick. She said she was lying down. She, couldn't, she just couldn't make it to work that day. So she, she sent a message to say, I'm not coming today. That was the day UN House was bombed. And we know real human beings that died. It's not a story. I know some of the people that died. She took ill that morning. So sickness is not a good thing. Is that not so? Say, so I rebuke you. I am healed. But that day, God held her down. You are not going anywhere today. Can you please be grateful for your situation? Sometimes you don't understand. But the song, the songwriter says, by and by, by and by, when the morning comes, when the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story how we overcome. We will understand it better by and by. Praise the Lord. You may be in that situation that you don't understand, but by and by you will understand. 
By and by, you will understand. It's always for good, particularly if you have a relationship with God. So, I'm emphasizing the place of that relationship. Don't be a Christian that just comes to church to show face and go, no. Establish a relationship with the Lord. And he orders your step. If he orders your step and you miss a flight, to God be the glory. If he orders your step and you, you know, somebody promised something I didn't give you, to God be the glory because he's always working in our favor. He won't give you something that does not favor you. Praise the Lord. So the first place to begin is a heart of gratitude. And a heart of gratitude makes you to exhibit the attitude of gratitude. An attitude of gratitude means, Father, thank you for whatever it is. Whether it rains, praise the Lord. Whether it, there is sun, praise the Lord. Whether I planned for this thing, I didn't happen, praise the Lord. Because you have a father who has your back, who is directing yourself. His eyes are all over you. His eyes are all over you. Wherever you are going, whatever it is you do, as long as you have a relationship. I will keep emphasizing that. Develop that relationship with Jesus. And you will overcome in Jesus' name. A heart of gratitude. A heart that rejoices before God. A heart that is humble. A heart that praises God all the time. Even when one, sometimes, even this morning as I woke up, I was feeling a little bit negative. I don't know. It's not like I had any particular thing that was wrong with me. I don't know whether you have those moods sometimes. But I just wasn't, wasn't myself. I just wasn't. And I began to sing. And I was restored. How can I be preaching about gratitude and I come with a grumpy spirit? You see how the devil works? It's not possible. It's just not possible. Right? A heart that appreciates what God has done. A heart that appreciates what God is doing. And another level of grace is a heart that appreciates what God will do. What God has not done. But you know he will do it because you know the God that you serve. Praise the Lord. So I may not be where I want to be yet, but I know I will get there because I have a father who is clearing the barriers for me. He says, I will go before you. Praise the Lord. He says, I will level mountains and I will elevate valleys so that you can have a smooth ride. So whatever barrier you are facing right now, do you know the God you are serving? Do you have a relationship with him? Praise the Lord. What are the benefits of gratitude? That is what we are looking upon uh, uh, at in our sermon today. Gratitude glorifies God. It, yeah, ah, it is the heartbeat of the Father. Is it not? Is it just God? You uncle, if you if you if you give a gift to somebody and the person is grateful, or you do something for someone, the person is grateful. Are you not? Does it not excite you? Oh yes, it does. It does. Second Corinthians four fifteen says, "All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more." People may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. When thanksgiving overflows, God is glorified. Hallelujah. So whatever problem you come with this morning, I'm here to preach to you that you have more to thank God for than to lament about. You have more to thank God for than to lament. In fact, in this ministry, uh, not just this church, but even where we are coming from, uh, within this week, I think it was for Bilari's um, book launch that... Uh, Pastor Ben Musa and his family came, you know, with Eunice. And Eunice came and gave me her daughter. She's a qualified registered nurse now. And Daddy and I were just discussing, look at these small children of that yesterday. You know, incidentally, in this week, we're also looking at old pictures, you know, from uh, our old album, because they are trying to do documentary for Daddy. So, you see, small rookie, small Louvier, small Eunice, you know, this most small children, in fact, they brought our 15th anniversary this thing. I saw a uh, piece. She was one of my little brides with Rookie. Small girl. She's reading medicine right now. Her elder sister, Joy, is a pharmacist. Eunice is a nurse. Right? Look at Rookie, barista. In fact, let me not do it inside my house again, but Uvia is an economist plus rap priest. Small, small children of that day. Uh, let me go a little bit higher. See, Shetima. <laughs> Pastor Ben, the day we went to look at uh, land for PPA Church, Pastor Ben looked at me and I said, hey, boys are now men. Yeah. Say, see, Shetima is now a husband and a father. I said, oh, oh sit down there now. And now an engineer too, because he was not an engineer when we met back then. Praise the Lord. And I know that great people are going to rise from this place. 
In fact, people have been made by the grace of God. They were not the ones making them, but the grace upon the ministry is, is also, you know, um, uh, manifesting in their lives. You know, people are being made. And our little children that we have in some being today. You remember little John uh, in Durubi 3? Uh -huh. John is in final year in this semester. He's in final year in University of Joss. Our children are coming. They will grow and be better than us. In the name of Jesus. Even the grown-up ones will grow higher in Jesus' name. Benefits of gratitude. Glorifies God. It opens our spiritual eyes to see God in all circumstances. Isn't that wonderful? When people are seeing negativity, you are seeing God ordering your step. As long as you have a relationship. Gratitude puts us in the will of God. As we continue to thank God, his will becomes manifest in our lives. Gratitude brings peace. In this situation where insecurity is, is everywhere in the country, you know, and lack is, is also, you know, uh, so, so high today. Gratitude gives you know, that inner peace that you can't even explain. Things may be turning around, you know, turning around, you know, around you. That kind of peace that Jesus had when he was in the boat with the disciples once upon a time and there was turbulence in the sea. Disciples were panicking and Jesus was sleeping. When God brings you to a point where you can sleep through the storms, it's another level of maturity. Praise the Lord. You know? And the Bible tells us in Philippians 4, 6 to 7, which is quite related to our main text, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. Um, it says, do not be anxious about anything. In 1 Thessalonians, he talked about rejoice always, give thanks in all circumstances. He says, do not be anxious about anything. So I don't know what the anxiety is in your heart right now. God is going to take care of it. He says, don't be anxious because your anxiety does not change anything. It's, instead, it will lead you into a depression. And that's not good for you. That's not good for you. Your blood pressure will rise. You know, that's not good for you. He says, what should we do? He says, by prayer and supplication or petition with thanksgiving. Now, there is cause for anxiety. And you are talking of thanksgiving. That's what we're talking about. It's a level of maturity. You look around you, things are turning upside down. But... You are mature enough to say, thank you, Jesus, because I know that this one too will pass. That's because looking back into your life, you know that turbulence had happened before. Either in your life or in somebody's life, it also passed. It also passed. It didn't kill them, and it's not going to kill you. Even if it killed them, it won't kill you. In the name of Jesus. He says by prayers and thanksgiving, learning to give thanks even when your request has not been met. He says, present your request to God. So the request you are presenting has not been met, but you are already thanking God. That is a level of maturity. This is the month of gratitude. Learn to thank God for what, who you are, for what you have. And by, by the way, who you are is also by the grace of God. I know you accepted Jesus, but if you were born into a different circumstance, you may not have found Jesus the way you found him. I hope you know that. If you are born into a typical family that practices a different religion, even you are giving your life to Christ, they will threaten your life. That is it. So be thankful that you found Jesus or that Jesus found you. Be thankful for who you are. Be thankful for what you have. Be thankful for what you are trusting God to do for you. That's a high level of maturity. And then when you, when you do that, look at verse 7. Philippians 4. Seven. He says, and the peace of God that passes every understanding. How can somebody understand you rejoicing when you are broke? God will not allow you to be broke. But even if you are broke, you know that the owner is your father. You are the child of the owner. So, by the grace of God, God has elevated some of us to a level where food will not finish by the grace of God. Right? And then my child is hungry and he does not have money in his, his, uh, uh, his pocket. Is he going to go hungry because he doesn't have money in his pocket? Eh? When there is food in my mother's kitchen, there is food in the fridge, how can you go hungry? How? It's not possible. Eh? 
For that matter, you go carry food, go work. Eh? We know how to carry food to work very well. <laughs> and the other day was asking me, Mommy, do you have a small flask? Because what do you want to flask how <laughs> to carry food to the office? Do you get, even if you don't have cash to buy food, you, there's food to carry. Why should you panic? Why should you panic? Praise the Lord. Don't know who is panicking in the house. I'm telling you to relax. Please relax. Tell somebody relax. God is still in control. He says, when you hand it over to him, he said, the peace of God that passes every understanding will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. I'm going to just go through the rest. Uh, it's a lot, but uh, we need to finish up the sermon. Gratitude draws us to God. Yes. Remember the case of the leper in Luke 17? Uh, the lepers in Luke 17 that were healed. And then out of 10 of them, Yes, uh, only one person came back to Jesus to give thanks, right? There's a song in my language, you know, I was singing it during the week, and Daddy was telling me, I had not even read the sermon. He was saying, will you sing it in church? I said, why will I sing it in church now? He said, because we're dealing with gratitude. Cairo, Cairo, Cairo. Cairo, Cairo, Cairo. If we were just to see we real, all for you know what that song means? Say, so where are they? Jesus healed 10 people. Only one came back to give thanks. Where are the nine? Where are the nine? Will you be among the nine that never gave thanks? Or will you be that one? Because the one that came was made whole. There's a difference between cleansing and being made whole. You know, I didn't have time to explore that, but one of these days I'm going to explore that wholeness. I think it goes beyond that healing. Praise the Lord. It's everything, you know, combined. And Jesus wants us to be whole. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. It says, you know, Jesus said to her, he said, rise and, uh, him, rise and go, your faith has made you whole. Gratitude brings contentment. How many of you read the devotional this morning? It was on contentment. For you who does not know where these two things come from, you will think we planned it. But I'm telling you before God and man that it was not planned because that is since the sermon. I saw the title yesterday, Gratitude. Try yesterday we were in St. Ayala's Leadership School for graduation. When I got home, I was exhausted. I went straight to bed after, you know, I gave daddy dinner. I slept. When I woke up this morning, the first thing was the devotional on my mind because Nami they do that one. I finished that one, I sent it, and then I said, let me settle down and look at this sermon, which I've not even looked at because I was so exhausted yesterday. And then when I got up to this place, I saw gratitude brings contentment. And I'm seeing that the same passage that was in the devotional, First Timothy 6, 6 to 8, but godliness with contentment is great gain. See, when I see these things coming together, I know that God has a message. And he will pass that message through every channel that he can find. God has a message. This was not planned. And I'm telling you, I'm standing at the altar of God. It wasn't planned. First Timothy 6, 6 to 8, he said, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out of it. You know, and having food and raiment, let us be there with content. I love the message of contentment. Some of us are the way we are because of contentment. We are not account another person money. Even if I hear millions that is not my own, I don't count it. And I don't compare it with my own. My own 1,000 naira that I worked for diligently is more valuable to me than somebody else's millions. It's the spirit of contentment. It's not like I'm not ambitious. I want more. I want God to bless me more. But I'm not in competition with anybody. I, and have you seen people who receive less and, 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 and borrow to uh, uh, lend to people who receive more than them? Oh, in an office, you will see your guy coming to ask driver, eh? Say, please, give me 5,000 there. Go talk and like, say, nah, I'm gonna lie. He's broke. He's broke. You'd be shocked. A senior person in the office earning like two times two of salary, but you are borrowing from a junior officer because that one, God's grace is upon his money and he's managing it well. Praise the Lord. I am not in, is this greed that is causing Yahoo? Is this greed that is causing all kinds of things? I told you about a young boy who I'm mentoring telling me, eh, 
Uh, I see what my mates are doing. I say, shut up. Who are those your mates in their early 20s that have made the kind of achievement that is making you to be agitated like this? Can you relax? Can you relax and face your studies? Because that is the most important thing in your life right now. Can you face your studies and graduate with a good grade? And then let God take you step by step to where he's taking you. I thank God that he listened to me. Praise the Lord. Many of us, young people, we, we you know, comp com comparing ourselves with others. Your destiny is different from another person's destiny. I don't have time for that kind of nonsense. I'm not saying that I'm satisfied with where I am because I know that God is taking me higher. But I am not in competition with anybody. I am rather in competition with myself. What I was last year I should be better this year. Praise the Lord. So please, let's, let's take note of that. Gratitude brings contentment. Gratitude deepens faith. It brings joy. It helps to defy Satan's lie. Satan's lie is, you know, Satan makes you focus on the current problems and the current lack in your life, and then you forget all the provisions of the past and all, all of God's faithfulness in your life in the past. Psalm 84 verse 11 says, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk in blamelessness. Gratitude guards against envy. You have no time to envy somebody else because you are also loaded. If you care to look inside, you know, and sow the seed that God has placed in you, you see that you have nothing to envy anybody about. Because their own, their own uh, path, path of life is different from yours. Gratitude helps us to live in the present. That you are alive is sufficient to thank God for. Gratitude helps to appreciate the beauty of today. Some people go through life, you don't even look up to see how beautiful the sky is. Because you are worried. Hey, hey God, oh, the sky is so beautiful you don't see. One day, Carrie, just sit outside and, and watch. See Baba at work in his canvas. How the sky changes. You know, yesterday I was snapping pictures away. I have time to look very well. I even snap pictures. If I see new flower in my compound, they snap them. You know, let's learn to relax. Knowing who we have believed. Eh? The Apostle Paul who says, I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able. Whatever it is you're facing right now, God is able. Praise the Lord. He is not impossible before him. I just hand it over to him. And, 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 and continue to rejoice and bless him. Your lamentation will not change anything. Your cry will not change anything. Learn to live above that. Gratitude is an acknowledgement of God and a testimony. When we show gratitude to God, we are testifying to what he has done, what he is doing, and what he will do. Psalm 105 verses 1 to 2 says, Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him. Sing praise to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Gratitude is an acknowledgement of God and a testimony. The benefits of gratitude are much in this month. We will show gratitude to God, but the people who God have used in our lives too, to our parents, to our teachers, to our pastors, to believers, to our co-workers, to neighbors, people in our country, and indeed any person who come across, who we come across. And as we show gratitude, we will reap the benefits of gratitude in Jesus' name. One of our colleagues uh, in those days was saying, at least when they say, then, then train person for school. How much safe? Made the calculator and make a pay. Ingratitude. At that time, he needed the school fees. He didn't have it. Even if it was one naira then. You didn't have it then. Somebody paid. And you have the mouth to say, how much self? Made the calculator. I've encountered ungrateful people. It's not a good experience. I've also encountered grateful people. People who are grateful for nothing. Some of them, it's not that I even gave one naira. It was just advice. I want to, want to give testimony today. It looks as if I gave millions. Praise the Lord. I've encountered, and those people, they move you to want to do more, right? That is it. And God deserves our gratitude. And as we, we bless him for 
whatever we think we have, even if it is little in our eyes, there are people whose prayer point is that thing in your hand. As we sit here today, alive and listening to message, there are people whose prayer point is, Father, let me not die, because they are lying at the point of death in the hospital. May the Lord bless every one of us in Jesus' name. I'm just going to do the anointing service and then we'll pray. Uh, we need some ministers to come up now, four ministers at least, so that we can do this quickly. Uh, choir, we need some background song. And as we take this anointing today, being the first Sunday of um, the month of September, uh, I want you to tie the anointing to something you want God to do for you. I don't know what it is. Maybe healing. It may be, I don't know. You know what it is. But the Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27, it says, And it shall come to pass in that day, and today is that day by the grace of God. That is, you, I didn't hear your amen. No. Yeah. I said, it shall come to pass in that day, and today is that day. Amen. That his burden shall be taken away from off your shoulder. Whatever burden you are carrying right now is going to be taken away from your shoulder. Amen. And his yoke from off thy neck. He said, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Can you trust God that that yoke will be destroyed this morning because of the anointing? Let us bow our heads in prayers. Father, we thank you for the sermon we have received, for the message we have received of gratitude. As we do the anointing service, we dedicate the oil in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Every head that receives this oil today, Lord, we experience relief from every yoke whatsoever that they have been carrying, from every body, from every sickness. Whatever it is, the desire of you, Lord, will be done in the name of Jesus. And they will look back on this day for a good memorial. Thank you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. So please, let's, let's spread ourselves around. And uh, can we stand to our feet? Um, ushers, please direct us. And let's do this quickly. Yeah. Jesus breaks the yoke. Fire, just as the professor is on the days of the latter rain. God is moving in his power again by the anointing. Jesus breaks the yoke. It's not by mind, it's not by power, by my spirit. Says the Lord.